Hello everyone and welcome to another Cutrate Commander Quick Precon Upgrade Guide. The series where we take precon decks we're unable to dedicate a full upgrade guide to and bring them up to cutrate standards. My name is Grazit and today we'll be covering the Warhammer 40k Forces of the Imperium Precon and its face commander Inquisitor Greyfax, which we'll be adding roughly $35 worth of upgrades to to bring up its power level on a budget. But before we continue, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this content and would like me to continue making more videos like this in the future. And if you feel particularly generous, please consider buying me a coffee at the link in the description to keep me caffeinated as I work on more of these builds. So, with that out of the way, let's start by taking a look at the commander and playstyle. Inquisitor Greyfax is a 3-3 human Inquisitor with Vigilance that costs 1 in Esper and has the following abilities. Unquestionable Wisdom, which gives other creatures we control plus 1 plus 0 in Vigilance, and Hunt for Heresy, which lets us pay 1 and tap Greyfax to tap target creature and opponent's controls and investigate. Breaking down Greyfax's core stats, she possesses a mid-size CMC, a below average stat block for her cost but built-in vigilance to compensate, and a pair of abilities that passively empower our creatures while tapping down our opponents to generate value. Taking a closer look at her first ability, Unquestionable Wisdom serves as a simple but effective anthem, its offensive stat boost working very well to allow creatures to punch over their weight, allowing them to more easily trade up when blocking or being blocked or deal additional damage as they connect, while the AoE Vigilance it provides allows us to swing in with our creatures and still have them available to block, making counterattacking us awkward for our opponents if our board state is well established. Then moving on to Greyfax's second ability, Hunt for Heresy, it not only provides some solid crowd control with its tap-down effect, effectively removing our opponent's biggest blocker on offense or biggest attacker on defense, but also generates us card advantage in the form of clue tokens, which we can either use for their intended purpose to draw cards, or instead take advantage of them in other ways via Esper's vast array of artifact-centric abilities, such as using them to create additional creature tokens, providing us with card advantage without having to use them up, and even turning them into creatures themselves to swing into our opponents with. So, as we can see based on her abilities, Inquisitor Greyfax is a commander that cares about creatures via empowering them through her anthem, that also possesses clue generation and soft removal thanks to her tap effect, making the direction she wants to go in not immediately obvious. Right out of the box, she's already competing with Marnius Kalgar, the alternate commander in the deck, and, if we were to go full token creation, arguably the better option since he can draw us cards with no mana investment. But unlike Marnius, who's very much all in on the token creation game plan, Greyfax a second ability provides, if we build around it, a cheap and repeatable source of combat control and artifact token generation, which is what this precon upgrade guide will aim to take advantage of to achieve victory. As such, this ability being limited to once per turn just won't do, so we'll be replacing some of the less synergistic members of the core build with multiple means to untap our commander to allow her to use her ability multiple times per rotation, enabling her to better control who can and cannot attack us while generating us a healthy amount of glue tokens as she does so. And then to take further advantage of all this new untapping we'll be adding in, we'll also be adding in some additional creatures with powerful tap effects we can get multiple uses out of if we find ourselves unable to or not needing to use our commander's ability. And with all the clue generation we'll be doing, we'll of course be adding in multiple means to get additional value out of them, ranging from damaging our opponents as we use them up to draw, to turning them into creatures to build up our board states and swing into our opponents with. But that's enough talk, as this Inquisitor has no time to waste. Even with all her years as a Puritan Inquisitor of the Order Hereticus, having wrought divine justice upon the traitors, the mutants, and the heretics that would threaten the Imperium, Greyfax knows full well that it will all have been for nothing if the forces of chaos are not stopped. And stop them they will, as she, along with the fearless men and women of the Imperial Guard, the Adeptus Mechanicus, and the mighty Space Marine Legions themselves will stand up against this onslaught and prevail, even at the cost of their very lives, for Holy Terra, for the Imperium, and for the Emperor. So, now that we know a bit more about the commander and playstyle, let's jump right into the upgrades. Starting off with our creature upgrades, we'll begin by cutting some of our less token-focused entrants and replacing them with some additions that help us get extra uses out of Greyfax's tap down and clue generation. For instance, we'll be sidelining Cybernetica Datasmith, whose ability to give tokens or draw to an opponent may be better suited for a goat or wheel build, Acroflagellant, whose inability to block makes granting it Vigilance pointless, and Redemptor Dreadnought, who doesn't have the massive targets to exile from our bin to make it viable in this build, and replacing them with Vizier of Tumbling Sands, Kelpie Guide, and Fate Stitcher. All of which let us untap Greyfax so she can tap down more creatures and create more clue tokens, or alternatively can be used to untap other creatures with tap effects, ramp us by untapping our lands and rocks, or in 
the case of the latter two, tapping down our opponent's permanents to slow them down even further. It's then on to a controversial change, in which we'll be trading out Vexilus Praetor, who by all means is a fantastic source of protection for any commander, but in this build actively prevents our targeted sources of untapping from untapping our commander, and putting in Drum Bellower in its place, which untaps our entire creature base each turn to not only get us extra uses out of our commander, but also out of all our other creatures with tap effects, thereby increasing this deck's speed considerably. Triumph of St. Catherine is then the next creature to get the axe, being a hard to permanently remove life gaining beat stick that would find a better home in a life gain or miracle style build, with White Plume Adventurer taking its spot, giving us another way to automatically untap our commander for free each turn that also nets us value by introducing the initiative into the game, eventually untapping all our creatures each turn once we clear the Undercity to get even more uses out of our tap effects. Then switching gears from untap effects to creatures with tap effects to take advantage of them, we'll be cutting the legend Celestine the Living Saint and Niyam Shai Murad, who would find better homes in life gain and reanimation decks respectively, and replacing them with another pair of legends, Micaeus the Lunark and Fane the Broker, both of which can make much better use of the untapping effects we've added to the build by either pumping our entire creature base each turn, or converting our clue tokens into evasive bodies to help build up our board state instead. Similarly, we'll be extracting Caldeus Assassin, its ETB creature destruction and clone effect making it much more suitable for a flicker or clone build than this one, and deploying Beguiler of Wills to replace it, fitting much better into this build thanks to the large amount of creature token creation the core build already has to allow us to steal sizable creatures from our opponents, while our untapping effects allow us to use it multiple times per rotation to pilfer our opponent's most powerful creatures much more frequently. Then moving on to some creatures that will get us some extra mileage out of our clue tokens, Sanguinary Priest and Sister Repenta, whose on death drain and draw would be much better suited for an Aristocrat's build, will be swapped out for Nadir's Nightblade and Marionette Master, both of which tack on some decent AoE or single target burn as we crack our clues for value to pile on the damage, as well as cutting Sister Hospilator, who would be a much better fit in a reanimation style build than this one, for Workshop Elders, who passively weaponize our clues by permanently turning them into 4-4s and granting them flying so long as they stick around, making them a solid way to expand our board state with evasive bodies. And finally, as our last creature upgrades, we'll be swapping out the flash speed removal creatures Sister of Silence and Grey Knight Paragon, both of which offer fine removal but aren't necessary here as we have more than enough removal and tap down already, and swapping in Erdwall Illuminator and Ethereal Investigator in their place, both of which work better with our Investigate heavy playstyle, the former by doubling up on the first Investigate we perform each turn, and the latter not only generating us extra clue tokens as it comes down, but also generating extra 1-1 evasive bodies as we crack them to draw on both our in our opponent's turns. Then with our creatures covered, our next upgrade comes to us in the sorcery slot, where we'll be axing for the Emperor, which is an okay overrun style effect, but our lack of life gain payoffs and easy access to AoE vigilance already making it less useful in this build, and giving it spot to rise and shine, which we can overload to turn all our clue tokens as well as our rocks and other utility artifacts permanently into 4-4s four for us, potentially creating an instant army for us out of nowhere if we've been stockpiling our clues. It's our enchantment upgrades then up next, with the first of two changes being exchanging out and they shall know no fear, whose creature specific protection would be more useful in a tribal build for thorough investigation, which not only gives us additional clue tokens as we swing in, but also lets us venture into the dungeon every time we sack a clue for any reason, netting us additional value from the various dungeons as we crack our clues for card advantage or through other means. Then our second and last enchantment change sees a swap out deploy to the front, which costs a bit too much for its token creation effect, and replacing it with Felidar Retreat, which gives us the option to either create extra bodies for us if we need the board presence, or, if we have the bodies on board already, lets us load them up with plus one plus one counters as we make our land drops, making it a solid addition that works well on both unestablished and established board states. Then entering our artifact upgrades, our first round of changes will see our ramp package get a bit of refinement, with the basic rock commander sphere, the two removal focused assault intercessor, and the subpar removal spell entrapment maneuver all being removed in favor of Azorius Signet, Demir Signet, and Orzov Signet, all providing the build with efficient mana to pump into our commander's tap down effect or to crack our clues for draw. And with our ramp covered, it's on to adding some additional untap effects to the build. With the vehicles Knight Paladin and Reaver Titan being scrapped, their ETB and on attack burn not really fitting into this deck's game plan, and Exterminatus being called off due to being a bit too effective at getting rid of everything on the field, including our own resources, making room for Praetor Seal, Thousand Ear Elixir, and Unbender Tin, all of which provide us with even more ways to untap our commander while also serving as a decent mana rock, providing all our creatures with tap effects pseudo haste, or untapping any target 
respectively. And lastly, we'll wrap up our artifact upgrades by cutting the Wipe Fell the Mighty, which is fine but may be unusable once our boards have been pumped by our commander and other sources of anthems and counter distribution, and adding in Tamiyo's journal in its place, which gives us yet another source of clue generation as well as an alternate way to use them by allowing us to sack three of them to tutor up anything from our deck, greatly improving our deck's consistency and being easily usable once per turn or even more depending on how many untap effects we have on board alongside our commander. It's then on to our new Planeswalker edition, in which we'll be trading out Ash Barons and its mediocre fixing for Tezzeret Betrayer of Flesh, who passively allows us to crack a clue each turn for free, while his minus two allows us to animate our clues into four fours, which helps us get a lot more mileage out of our commander's clue generation, while also providing decent card advantage and card selection with his other loyalty abilities. And finally, reaching our land upgrades, we'll be swapping out the Gainland, Scoured Barons, and Tranquil Cove for the faster Painlands, Cave of Coleos, and Edakar Waste to help speed up our mana base. Exchanging our last Gainland, Dismal Backwater, in favor of the Slow Fetch Obscura Storefront to help us fix for any of our colors instead of just two, and axing Memorial to Glory and its slow token creation for Heaven Ghoul Laboratory instead, which serves as a decent payoff for our clue token generation with its reanimation effect as it transforms. And lastly, we'll be rebalancing our basics a bit by exchanging one plains and one swamp for two islands to fit better with our now more blue focused build. So, now that we've covered all 30 cards we'll be upgrading from the core build, let's take a look at the breakdown for this quick pre-con upgrade. This deck currently has 30 creatures including the commander, 4 instants, 5 sorceries, 6 enchantments, 18 artifacts, 1 planeswalker, and 36 lands. Looking at the stats that matter to our game plan, we have 17 sources of creature token creation, 11 sources of AoE pump in the form of anthems, battle cries, or plus one plus one counters, 7 sources of clue token creation, 12 cards that can use clues or other artifacts to generate value, 8 creatures with tap effects, and 8 cards that can untap our permanents, giving us plenty of creature token generation to take advantage of our commander's anthem as well as a decent number of sources to power them up even further, additional clue token generation to work alongside our commanders and means to get extra value out of them as we crack them to draw or through other means, and a decent number of creatures with their own tap effects that we can use alongside our commander, along with a good number of repeatable ways to untap them to get extra uses out of them on every rotation. For general deck stats, we have 13 ramp sources, 15 card draw sources, 9 targeted removal sources, and 3 board wipes, our draw being higher than average due to all our clue token generation while our other stats fall within normal ratios. Looking at our mana curve, we have 1 0 drop, 5 1 drops, 12 2 drops, 16 3 drops, 19 4 drops, 7 5 drops, 2 6 drops, and 2 7 drops leaving us with a mid-weight curve that aims to get our commander on the board quickly, followed by multiple means to untap her to begin locking down our opponent's biggest creatures as we begin assembling our own token army, all the while using the clues she generates for us as additional card advantage means to create additional creature tokens or even turning them into creature tokens themselves, steadily gaining us value until our opponents are crushed under our superior numbers and tactical control of the battlefield. The final price of our upgrades then come out to be $34.58. The price of these upgrades was calculated by using the cheapest listed marketplace price on TCG Player at the time of this recording. For side grades, Inspiring Statuary would make a superb payoff for our clues that effectively turns them into colorless mana rocks to help cast our spells. Cyberdrive Awakener is a great finisher that animates all our clues and other artifacts while also granting them evasion for a turn to perform devastating alpha strikes. Kaya Geist Hunter is a solid way to double up on our token creation for a turn as well as granting all our creatures death touch to make blocking them even harder. And Afedo Alchemist and Freed from the Real are additional means to untap our commander or other creatures with tap effects to get us even more uses out of them. Then for further upgrades, Mage Rite Stone, Pemin Zora, and Teferi Who Slows the Sunset would give the build even more ways for us to reuse and abuse our creatures' tap abilities, as would Intruder Alarm, which works well with our easy-to-access AoE Vigilance, and can potentially allow us to create infinitely large board states with enough untap effects and token creators in play, and Bloodline Keeper works well with both our token creation and untapping game plans by creating evasive flyers at no mana cost, rapidly building up our board states so long as we keep untapping him. And finally, Anointed Procession permanently doubles both our clue and creature token generation to effectively double the speed of our deck, while almost doubling the price of our upgrades as well, which I admit is kind of appropriate. Thanks everyone for sticking around until the end of the video. With the last of our quick upgrade guides for the Warhammer 40k precons covered, I'd like to hear back from you. Let me know if you folks enjoyed this shorter format series and if there's anything else you'd like to see in it if and when we do it again in the future. 
Any feedback would be greatly appreciated so we can make this series even better the next time around. And as usual, please like, comment, and subscribe if you like this content to help keep the channel growing. And if you really liked it, please consider buying me a coffee at the link in the description to give me the energy I need to continue making these extra episodes. And with that, have a good one folks, and stay safe.